Let there be light. Praise God. Last week we talked about the, uh, the first I am statement, which was the bread of life. Today we're going to talk about I'm the light of the world. When I was a kid, I was, I don't know, probably five years old. And my dad, my mom asked me to go outside. And she asked me to go out and get her purse out of the car. And I went outside, I went to go outside and I seen it was dark. I turned around and went back in the house. And my daddy said, boy, your mama asked you to do something. I expect you to get out there and do it. And I don't say this to degrade my father in any way. Don't think that's where I'm going with this because it's not. But I wouldn't go out that door, so Daddy encouraged me out that door. And I went out there, and I sat on that porch, and he turned that porch light off. And he said, you know, the quicker you get out there and the quicker you get back, he said, you ain't got to worry about them boogers that are out there in that dark. So I'm sitting there on that porch, five years old, scared to death. Because there's darkness all around me. Imagine that's how we feel today. That's how we feel as Christians today. We think, God, where are you? God, I'm lost and I'm undone. By, I'm saved by the grace of God. I got a home in heaven. But I'm lost in what's going on in this country, what's going on in this nation, the violence, all of the things that are going on. We get tied up in that. We get tied up in the, in, in, in the darkness and it, and it shades the light. It shades the light. We can't see the light because we're so concerned about the darkness. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be concerned about the darkness. Don't think that's what I'm saying. We should be concerned. But we've got to be the light while we're here on this earth so that God can overcome the darkness through us. Amen? But as I sit out there on that porch, I realize the quicker I get to that car and the faster I get back to this house, I can walk back in where there's light. Isn't that our life today? Isn't that how we feel when we have circumstance after circumstance after circumstance happen in our life? And we think, what next? We get the attitude of what next? When you've had everything go wrong for a week, then you start the next week wondering, well, what's going to go? We start praying, Lord, thank you for the day. But then in our mind, we're thinking, Lord, what next? I blow the tire. I had this happen, this happen, this happen. What's going to happen next? And we get that mentality. But I want to start, we're going to talk about the light of the world, but I want to start about talking that the world is in darkness. Yes. This world is in darkness. And I looked some of these things up. And about 250 years ago, according to historians, the world came out of the dark ages, and the, and the age of enlightenment was born. Mankind, it was said, was ushered into a new age where science would become the savior of the world. Well, we know that's a lie. It was declared by the prophets of the, of the day that the 20th century would usher in the golden era of mankind as the golden calf of scientific knowledge was worshipped by man. We're watching the dying embers of the 20th century as we look at our world today and would describe this as the golden age. No. It's true that science has brought us many conveniences, hasn't it? It has. We don't have to go to town in a horse and buggy. We got automobiles now. We got way of travel. We, got, we can go eat breakfast in Europe, and then we can eat supper in Los Angeles. Isn't that something? We have air travel. We got ways to get around. So, so some things have been a blessing, but some have been a curse. We have automatic washing machines to, to some of you ladies that might remember the old board that you had to scrub clothes on. I know my granny did that. We have vacuum cleaners, dishwashers. But did we really have more time to enjoy life? We have electric blankets instead of a hot water bottle to keep your feet warm at night. But are we sleeping more soundly and secure? We have all kinds of convenient fast foods, but are we eating better? Why is it that we have to supplement our diets with all kinds of vitamins. What are we eating? With the computer age and the modern social media and television and newspapers and magazines to keep us informed about life, 
did we really have a greater understanding of what is truly going on in our world? The media will lie to you 100%. We have an explosion of knowledge, and we know a little bit about everything, but not much about anything. That's a mouthful right there. If we know a little bit about everything, but not much about anything. We have psychiatrists who can do analysis and classify your disorders. But beyond that, they can only make you dependent on drugs to cope with life. The big question is, if life is so much better, why do we need so many psychiatrists? They did not exist 300 years ago when poor mankind was so deprived of all the blessings that science has brought to us. It should also be mentioned that science has also brought us stealth bombers, cruise missiles, atom bombs, by which we can destroy cities thousands of miles away. Are, are we living more secure lives? We could put a man on the moon and talk about colonizing and living on the moon, but with all the scientific advancements, we really haven't learned how to live on earth. Crime is at an all-time high. The jails are overcrowded. Families are in disarray. Divorce is at an all-time high. And babies are being killed through abortion every day. So, let's face it. Are we living in the conditions that are parallel? We are living in the conditions that are parallel to Sodom and Gomorrah. The pagan gods of sex and pleasure are being worshipped by greater numbers than in any period of history. Wow. The world is in disarray. There is so much going on, and there is so much darkness that is around us. So what John said of his day, of his day has always been true of this age. What did John say? He said, the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world lies in wickedness. We get to John chapter, chapter 8, and I believe it's verse 12, where Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He tells them, and this was after the woman that had committed adultery came to, the Pharisees brought this woman that was caught in adultery. He brought, this was right after that when this took place, when John told them I was the light of the world. The Pharisees were doing everything they could possibly do to trip Jesus up. And Jesus tells them, he comes out and he says in verse 12, he says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Well, that just made these guys mad. Why did it make the Pharisees angry? Because they didn't believe. They, they were happy. They were content. I wouldn't want to say happy because happiness is a state of mind. It's not reality. But they were content. They were content in where they were. They did not want to see the light because their darkness was all around them and they were content in this darkness. Let me ask you a question. Do you like doing things at nighttime or do you like doing things during the day? I prefer the daylight because I can see. The older I get, the harder it is to see when it gets dark. Them LED lights is a great invention, Danny. They help me tremendously. I like a lot of light because I want to be able to see. Let me ask you this. If your light bulb goes out in your bathroom, do you not replace it? Or do you just let it sit there? Of course you replace it. Why do you replace it? Because you want to be able to turn the light on and see where you're walking so you don't stub your toes, so you don't trip over something, so you don't fall down. Light is an essential part of our everyday life. That's why Christ explains himself as the light of the world. Because he says, without it, you're in total darkness. Let's go back to First John, I mean to, to John chapter 1. Let's hear what was said here. John chapter 1. Because this is really amazing. This was, uh, we'll get to where it was John the Baptist. But this is the beginning. John 1, 1 tells us, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made through Him. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. Everything has been created 
through God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Nothing without him was ever made. Verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. This is why these Pharisees were so tripped up. Because they didn't comprehend the light because they had been in darkness for so long. Have you ever been to like uh, interspace caverns or, or one of these caverns? And then they turn off all the lights and they tell you to hold your hand in front of you and try to look at your hand and it's just total darkness. In that cave, it's total darkness. And then when they turn the lights on, you're happy to see that the lights are on. In that total darkness, that's a bad place to be. No one truly wants to be in total darkness. God puts a yearning in our hearts. Even the people in this world that are lost do not want to be in darkness. But they've been so deprived by not, not listening to the Word of God. They've been so deprived by hearing the light of the world that they've lived in this darkness so long that they've become comfortable in this darkness. And they've, been come, they've come content in this darkness. And there's so many people in each one of your lives, family members, friends, people that you know, that you know is living in darkness because they don't have Jesus Christ as their Savior. There's people in my life that is living in darkness because they don't have Jesus Christ as their Savior. But what do we do? What do we do? We take, and when we're around certain people, we don't pull the switch and turn the light bulb off, do we? But what do we do? We kind of put a shade over it. You ever took that lamp and pulled the shade off the lamp so you can see a little better? Because with the shade on the lamp, it only gives light to a little area. But you pull that shade off and set it off, then you got light and it, it'll shine a little brighter, won't it? Then you get fussed at because you pulled the shade off the lamp. But that's what we do. That's what we do as Christians today. We look around and I can't believe this and I can't believe that. I don't know why this is happening. I don't know why that's happening. But we're putting that shade. And this is God's children I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the unbeliever. I'm talking about the believer. We're putting that shade over us to where people cannot see the light of the world. They can't see Jesus. They see part of it. But they don't see all of it. Well, let me tell you this. You're not going to, like I said, that light bulb goes out in your bathroom. You're going to replace it because you want to see. Why would you not let the world see Christ that is in you? Why would you not allow the world to see what Christ? Well, you don't understand. I can't lose my job. I can't be witnessing on the job. I lose my job. How am I going to take care of my family? How am I going to take care of my bills? What did Jesus say in Matthew? So don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, what you're going to do. Said the Father feeds the, feeds the birds of the air. Do you think he won't feed you? I'm not saying don't be, I'm not saying being lazy. I'm not condoning that. But what I'm telling you is spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and quit keeping Christ in a box. Yes. Because he is the light of the world. If people can't see the light, then when you get to heaven and you stand before God, he's going to, he's going to ask you some questions. You know, there was five or six, eight people that you come in contact with in the course of your lifetime. If you'd have let your light shine, they would have found salvation. But they lost salvation because they didn't see the light in you. I thought you was a Christian. How many has been told that before? I thought you was a Christian. Hmm? Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. He tells us over in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, he tells the disciples, he says, you are the light of the world. John chapter 8, 12, he says, I'm the light of the world. And in Matthew 5, 14, he tells his disciples, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works in heaven. Are we doing that? Are we being that light that's shining to a very dark world? Because I'm going to tell you what, you can turn these lights out, and I was going to do this, but I, I didn't think about it. Uh, but I wanted to bring a candle and light it. A little bit of light, just a little bit of light in a very dark place. Brings a lot of light to a room. And if we could just be a little bit of light to a very dark world, imagine the difference that it would be. Jesus come to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. He come to save our souls, but he didn't come just for us to get saved and to stay in a box. He didn't come for us to say, that's why he calls them disciples. You know why he chose 12? So that they could go and make 24. 
so that they could go and make 38, so they could go and make 50, they could go make 100, so that they could go make more. Because what's the Great Commission? Go into all the world teaching and preaching the gospel and making disciples. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the very end of the age, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He gives us a, it gives us a, a, a job. He gives us a job. He tells us to go out and make disciples. He chose the 12 to get started. But that needs to multiply, multiply, multiply. Yet we don't see discipleship anymore. We don't see discipleship. We don't see people yearning for the Word of God anymore. We come and we say a prayer and we accept Christ and we're saved. We're going to heaven. But we're comfortable staying right there. I'm going to heaven. That's all that matters. But what about your family? What about your friends? What about your spouse? I've known people that their spouse wasn't saved. Why do we stop with salvation and put it in a box and stay right there? That's not being the light of the world. That's not letting people see Jesus Christ. And we hold on to things. We hold on to the things that is in darkness. We hold on to so much that we forget where God is in our life. We've got to get to the point of our life that people don't come to us and say, I thought you was a Christian. People need to come to us and say, I know you're a Christian because I see Christ. I see the light in you. Have you ever had somebody talk about somebody and said, man, that person was just glowing. They were just glowing today. I don't know what it was about them. The light of Christ. The light of Christ is manifest in us when we live and we walk in righteousness. But we have to live and walk in that righteousness. We have to stay true to that. The problem is not the lack of knowledge. Uh, the problem is not the lack of the knowledge of the material universe. But it is the lack of the knowledge of God. That's the problem. Is we don't have the lack of the knowledge of this universe. Because we can turn on the TV and see everything that's going on in the universe. We can go to social media and see what's going on in the universe. But the lack of knowledge... People perish because of the lack of knowledge. And people are dying every day because of the lack of knowledge of God. So we need to understand that it's not about worldly wisdom that brings man to the knowledge of God, but it's quite the opposite. It tries to deny the existence of God. The worldly wisdom tries to deny the existence of God. So, Paul said... Uh, Paul, in his ministry, he was called to go to the Gentiles, Apostle Paul. And that was in Acts chapter 9 when, when he was Saul and, and, and he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And he was told to take the, the, the word to the Gentiles. In Acts 26 and 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from the darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. This was, Paul, this was Paul's assignment. His assignment. This was his job. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan to the power of God. That's what Paul's assignment was on this earth. And you know what? If you'll read, Paul wrote roughly 13 books of the New Testament. 13, 14 books. He wrote most of the New Testament. And if you'll look at these, these books that Paul wrote, his passion, everything, he devoted everything to the gospel. He was a wicked man at one time. Oh, he was worldly and he was caught up in it when they were stoning Stephen. Paul was holding all of their cloaks. I don't know that he had anything to do with the stoning part of it, but he was there and he was permitting it. But we are called. We are called from the darkness and from, and from the power of Satan into the power of God. And that's what he wants us to understand. That's what Paul was trying to bring to the Gentiles, which that's us, because we're not Jews. He was trying to bring that to us to let us know that it's time for us to move from these things and understand. What about Nicodemus? Jesus told Nicodemus that the problem with the world was the love of darkness rather than the love of light. John three nineteen, And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. 
Here's these guys that are, that, that are, that are going to say crucify him. Hang him on the cross. And they're condemning him because he said, I'm the light of the world. And he says, he goes further, if you'll read in 8, read the rest of it when you have time. If you'll read the rest of chapter 8, he tells us. He tells us about him and the Father. There's two. And what we have to understand is that Christ is always confirming his deity. He's always confirming his holy scripture. Christ is never told a lie. The Father's never told a lie. His word stands and it will stand to the, to, to the end of time. So, what is the effect of light? What is the effect of light when we're walking in the light? It exposes the things that are hidden in darkness. When you go into a dark room, you have no idea what might be in that room. Rainy the other night went outside and it was dark and she turned the light on. The porch light. She saw some scorpions and she turned around and went back in the house. You don't know what's in the dark if you don't have light. So the, effective, the, the effect of light is we've got to express the things that are hidden in darkness. One of the purposes of light is to expose the things that have been hidden in darkness. Paul said in five, Ephesians 5 and 11, And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done in, of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth makes, make manifest is light. As the light of the world, wherever you go, the things that are being done in darkness are exposed. This is why people are uncomfortable around you when you're saved. People that are lost and don't know Christ, they get uncomfortable around Christians. When they know you're a Christian and they know that you're following God, they get uncomfortable because they're in that darkness and they don't, they don't see that light. But Christ never condemned. Let's read this. Let's read further down here and uh, start in verse 13. It says, then, then the Pharisees therefore said to him, You bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, Even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from and where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. And yet, if I do judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one who bears witness. This is where I was talking about the two men. I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. Then they said to him, where is your father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. These words Jesus spoke in the treasure as he taught in the temple, and no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. Then Jesus said to them again, I am going away, and you will seek me, and will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. Then over in chapter 9, he tells us in verse 5, chapter 9, he says, As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. What we have to understand is God has called us out of darkness. We know that. That's pretty common sense, isn't it? He's called us out of darkness, and he's called us into his light. And if we don't get out of the dark world that's, that we're living in and start walking in the righteousness of Christ, we're not going to see improvement. We're not going to see improvement in our life. We're not going to see improvement in this country, in this world, because we're still stuck in a rut, and we're not moving anywhere. I encourage you today, if, you, if you're not, get in a Bible study. Start digging into God's Word, because I'm going to tell you what, there is so much when you start translating this into the original Greek, and you start getting this Bible translated into the original language that it was written, you start understanding a lot of things that you, that you did not comprehend before. And we need to do that. We need to understand God's Word. Because one day we're going to meet Him. Right or wrong. Saved or unsaved. One day we're going to meet Christ. And we're going to stand before Him. I want to know as much as I can possibly know about Him when I stand before Him. And I want you to know as much as you could possibly know. But one thing that we have to understand is we have a commission. 
And I'm going to close with this. As he tells us, and John, we read uh, John, but uh, 1 through 9. But John the Baptist was speaking. He said, when John the Baptist was speaking, he says, This man comes for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He said, he was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. That was John the Baptist. He was prior to Christ. He came to bear witness of that light. You know what our job is? To bear witness of the light. To bear witness of the light. And how do we do that? We apply this word in our hearts and in our life. We learn to bite our tongue when things ain't going the way that we want to say. We learn to shut our mouth and not speak when we shouldn't speak. The only way you can do that is putting this word in your heart and living it. Because when you get in the flesh, you're going to do the things of the flesh. You're going to do the worldly things. You're going to do the things of wickedness and darkness. But when you get in the light, you can't do the darkness because the light overcomes the darkness. So if we'll get more of Christ in here, the less darkness we'll start seeing when we, when we react to things that happen. We'll start reacting in the light, not in the darkness. Isn't that something? You say, well, you know, that's a good talk. That's a good, that's a good game. That's a good talk. But let me see you live it. Well, I say the same thing to you. Let me see you live it. Because that's a two-way street. We both need to live it. It's not just for the preacher. It's for everybody. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for your holy word and thank you for your scripture. Father, I just give you honor and glory for, for all that you do and everything that you continue doing. For Jesus, you truly are the bread of life. You truly are the light of the world. You sustain us through the bread of life. You give us hope through the light. Father, I just pray today if there's anyone here in this room that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, that's never accepted you as their Savior, I pray today that they will, they will ask you to come into their heart and change them. That they will ask you to come inside and to be a new creation and to walk in that newness of life and to walk in the light of Christ and to be a new creation. Father, we praise you and give you honor and glory to the holy name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen.